Hi, this is Robert, an ambassador for Christ. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you want to grow in your understanding and knowledge of the wisdom or in the wisdom of God and the scriptures, make sure you hit that, hit that subscribe button. Now, um, <clears throat> I've got my Bible out, right? And I'm going to try and read. I was thinking about this the other day. Um, I'm going to read John chapter 1. I'm going to try and read it. Just, just read it, you know. Read it, see what I pick up out of it and see what happens. Now, I'm going to try my best, all right, to read. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. A disclaimer. A quick disclaimer. Um, I don't know where I'm going to go. I may go places that just seem just beyond belief. Seem crazy. They may even seem like inconsistent. Maybe, I don't know. It might just sound too weird to be true and, and too mind-boggling and too much for the brain to even think there. I'm doing that disclaimer. I'm just going to be talking and just see what where we go. Um, some of the things I might stretch and it might be too much of a stretch. I don't know. But, um, you know, let's see, let's see what happens, okay? Um, it says in John chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word. Now, <laughs> it's just, this is, this, I don't think I'm going to get that. I just can't see me getting it. I can't see me getting that far at all. It might be like three hours and I'm not on verse seven. <laughs> Listen, it says, in the beginning was the word, right? So, in the beginning was the word. So, we know that the word is, it says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So, the word is God and the word was with God and the word was God, right? And we know, you know, everyone knows that in verse 14 and it says, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Everyone knows these scriptures. But so we know that the word is Jesus, right? Now this is where it gets a bit spooky, a bit crazy, because it says in the beginning was the word. So does that mean that God identifies himself as Jesus before he identifies himself as the almighty God? That's a bit weird, right? I'm just saying, and I'm, it's just the way we're in the linear language. See, when I read the Bible, every word, every letter, every full stop, every place name is there by design, is there for a reason. God done it for a reason. It's like the first things that Jesus said. He said to his mum, you know, why you seek, why seek me? Why you seek me? Can't you see that I'm about my father's business when he was 12 years old? Interesting thing, because when he was 12, 12 is the number of foundation. And the Bible says that Jesus Christ was slain from the foundation of the world. But where was you when I laid the foundations of the world in Job? You know what I mean? Where was you when I laid the foundations? So you can see that Jesus and foundation are kind of like inter intertwined and mean the same thing. Oh my days. This is what I'm talking about, right? This is all the weird stuff. When I open a Bible, it starts to scripture jump and go all over the place. And I go off topic and we end up doing, what's it called? Bible gymnastics, right? Because what I just said there was funky. <laughs> because 12 is a number of foundation. That's why you've got 12 disciples, you have, you know, 12, 12 tribes of Israel, you have 12 foundations in the New Jerusalem, you have all these 12s that are popping up everywhere, 12 disciples, 12 apostles, it's all foundations, do you get that? It's all crazy when you see number 12, you see? So it's like, you know, oh, I'm not going to go into that, That's, see it's taking me far away from what I'm trying to talk about. That's what I'm saying. I said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So I was saying is that, does God, it looks like in this scripture here, it's like, God, does God identify, identify himself as Jesus before he identifies himself as God? That would mean that, this is going to be weird, right? That would mean, I'm just saying, I'm not saying that that is exactly true, I'm just saying from what I'm reading. That would mean that Jesus is beyond almighty. <laughs> that means that Jesus is beyond creator, that means that Jesus is beyond omnipresence it means it's beyond everything it's why the bible says that you know world without end it says that the unsearchable riches of christ paul speaks about that how there's how you cannot get to the bottom of christ there is, there is no bottom it's a bottomless um revelation there is no bottom you cannot get to the end of jesus and like oh we've made it no it goes far beyond understanding that's what the bible says that it goes beyond beyond comprehension and when i just said what i just said there it's just a bit of a weird one to think. When you think, hold on, God identifies himself as Jesus before he identifies himself as God, then that means that when Jesus is walking on the earth, do you even know what he was dealing with? Do you see what I'm saying? Don't get me wrong, the Bible does say, listen, the Bible does say in, in Genesis chapter 1, 1, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, right? But John, when he re reads, when he writes chapter 1, verse 1, he goes beyond that. 
he starts to show you Jesus Christ as the pre-incarnate one, is that the word? Or the one that was there before time began. The one who has always been there. That's where he starts from. So in John's epistle, he starts from Jesus. This is crazy, right? Because in the Old Testament, Moses, when he writ the book of Genesis, obviously it's oral tradition, if I can say that, he started with God. Not, no revelation of Jesus Christ, you see? So he said, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. But John, with a revelation of Jesus Christ, he wrote the book of Revelation, the last book of the New Testament, it's called the, Revel uh, the Revelation of Jesus Christ, not the book of Revelations. Remember, it's not called the book of Revelations. It's called the book of Revelation. It's one revelation, and that revelation is Jesus Christ. So armed with that, armed, John being armed with that revelation of Jesus Christ, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, he starts his epistle, or he starts his gospel with, in the beginning was the word. In the beginning was Jesus. And Jesus, <laughs> I was going to change it, yeah. So, in the beginning was Jesus. And Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. And then it says, you know, in chapter 4, uh, 14, and Jesus was made flesh, in chapter 14, in verse 14, it says, you now it says, and the word was made flesh. And Jesus was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So what am I trying to say? The implications of that scripture is mind-boggling. Don't you think? These are the sort of things like, who was, I, I, I talked to a few people and I say, I was talking in one of my comments uh, yesterday about Jehovah, Jehovah Witnesses. I was speaking to, commenting to Kudu Wu. And she said to me, you know, you know, do a deeper Bible study. I've, I've got this from a few other people as well. And I said to her, you know, I, I, I was thinking of doing that, but I always seem to get stuck. You know, I, I think throughout the day, what should I speak about? And then as I'm starting to think about it, my brain starts to explode because the scripture linking's too crazy and it takes you on a dimension, um, roller, a dimensionality roller coaster where you end up in deeper things of God and understanding of things before time. And you, you start going mad. And it's all, and it's crazy. <laughs> so I don't like to step there too much or it's too long. So, um, yeah, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning of God, with God. So it's saying that, you know, oh, look, chapter th verse 3. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. So it's saying that everything was made by Jesus. Jesus Christ made everything. See? Jesus made everything. First Colossians, right? Chapter 1. Talk about the preeminent preeminent Christ, and it goes that um, in whom we have. I'm reading from verse 14. In whom we have redemption, redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Who is the image of the invisible God, right? The firstborn of every creature. So, Jesus is the image of the invisible God. So, if you want to know what God, if you want to know, if you want to know what the Almighty God looks like in three, four dimensions, he looks like Jesus. That's how, G, that's how God looks in three dimensions, in four dimensions. He looks like Jesus. So when Jesus was walking on the earth, it was God walking on the earth, because that's what God looks like on the earth. Wow. Deep. And it goes, um, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible or invisible, whether they be thrones, dominions, or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Now it gets deep. Because I'm meant to be reading John chapter 1, right? And now I'm in Colossians. What is going on? In Colossians, in that verse 16, it says that all things were made by him, that are things that are created that are in heaven and that are in, and that are in, in the earth, visible and invisible. So anything that is created, visible or, or invisible, was created by Jesus, right? And it says, whether they be thrones or dominions, principalities, powers, or thing, all things were created by him and for him. So we know that Thrones, dominions, and principalities and powers, that's, the, that's, that's angelic, angelic ranks. Angelic ranks of angels. He just, Paul just told you four. Angelic ranks of angels. There's nine. But he just mentioned four of them, okay? Principalities and powers, spiritual wickedness and high fire places. You can read that in Ephesians 6, verse 12, right? So he's telling you that, that what it is. And then it says, to the, to the scripture I wanted to get to, all right? He said, verse 17, And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, which is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, right? So he's talking about um, verse 19. I'm in Colossians and I'm, my head's already spinning, looking at, it says, For it pleased the Father that, that in him should dwell, or, or the fullness should dwell. So whatever was in, the, in God is inside Jesus, because they're both the same. See, this is the thing, right? When it comes about Jesus Christ, okay, this is deep, all right? 
See, people talk about a trinity. Because I'm not saying there's anything, anything wrong, all right? Because you, that's how certain people see, that's how certain people can explain God. They explain it through a trinity. That how it, that's how it makes sense in their head. But in my head, it doesn't make sense to me in my head. The trinity never made sense to me in my head because I don't see it as that. I don't see God being manifesting himself in different ways as a problem. See, I'm going to show you something that's mind-boggling, right? This is so mind-boggling. I'm about to speak in tongues then, but I'm not going to. <laughs> I'm going to read, read something that's mind-boggling. Remember, remember, I'm reading John chapter 1, right? And I'm, I can't even read John chapter 1 because now I'm doing scripture gymnastics. Because now I'm, I'm bouncing all over the place. See, in chapter 5, it speaks, this is so deep. It speaks about the, the seals. You know the seven seals that, that, um, that are meant to be opened? It says um, about the, the four horsemen of the, of the apocalypse. I think it's in verse, verse uh, sorry, chapter, it's chapter 5. It's talking about the sealed book. I'm sorry about this, people. And it goes, And I saw the right hand of him that sat on the throne, a book written wherein on the backside sealed, it was sealed with seven seals. And a strong angel proclaimed with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book to, to loose the seals thereof? Right? And no man in heaven, nor in earth, nor neither under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much because no man was worthy to open or no man was found worthy to open the book or open to read the book, neither to look thereon. So John, basically, John has seen God on the throne. God's on the throne and God is holding a seal, a, a, book, a scroll that's sealed. He's holding it, a scroll that is sealed. The almighty God is sitting on the throne with a scroll that is sealed, right? This is going to be deep, I'm going to share with you, okay? And, he, and John's crying because no one can open the sealed books, okay? He's crying, he's crying. And then it said, verse 5, it says, And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seals, the seven seals thereof. Right? So he's crying. He's seen the, the, the God on the throne with the, with the seals, and he's crying. An elder says, Don't cry. The lamb of the tribe of Judah, he's overcome. He, 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 he's able, he's worthy to open the seals. Okay? And he goes, This is deep. Verse 6. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, in the middle of the throne, right, and in the and in and uh, in the middle of the throne, and in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb, as had it, as had it been slain, having seven horns and seven he and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits sent forth into all the earth. Now, seven is a number of perfection, so it's a seven eyes. It means perfection in seeing. Seven horns, perfection in anointing. That's what that's what a seven is all about, right? This is where it gets deep. So, John. John sees God on the throne with the seals, starts crying because nobody can open the seals. Then an elder goes, don't worry, the lamb and the child of Judah, he can open the seals. And as he looked at the throne a bit more closely, he sees Jesus. What? <laughs> Jesus, right? Now this is where it gets deep. And it says, and he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. So this is what's crazy. Just some picture this, you've got a throne, you have God holding the throne. Then you have God get off the throne and take this. You have God get off the throne, take the book, the seals from his own hand and open them. So God is on the throne. Jesus Christ is God. He's on the throne and he got off the throne and took the seals out of his hand at the same time. What's the problem? Why do people have a problem of seeing that? Why can't God, see, why can't God be on the throne and off the throne at the same time? It's still him. Doesn't make any sense. Why can't people get that? I just think it's, it's a no-brainer brainer for me. God was on the throne with the seven seals in his hand. Then God got off the throne and took the seals out of his own hand and opened them. <laughs> so God was on the throne, off the throne at the same time. Two manifestations. When we look at the, the when we see in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was, was God, it's like God is on the throne. Then when he wants to manifest on the earth, he just gets off the throne. And he's still on the throne and he's just on the earth now as Jesus in a different manifestation so we can understand him. Simple as that. This is where it gets even more powerful. Powerfuler. I'll show you something here. Yeah, that's deep. You see, the, we need, we, when, the only way we can understand God is looking through the eyes, is, is seeing Jesus. If we can't see Jesus, you can't understand God. Simple as that. That's why the prophets, they saw, he's changed, I saw him, he's on the throne, he had, he, was, he had gold hair and he, and he had brass here and brass there and his people around his throne was doing this and the angels were doing that and there was a wheel within a wheel and there was a firmament above his head and 
but he looked like this and there's a rainbow about his head but there's a river of crystal coming from his throne and then but they just, they just can't get it they can't get it. Well, when i saw jesus I was like, oh <laughs> that's what he looks like yes when jesus manifests in three or four dimensions in the earth realm you can understand him when we see jesus christ you can understand the, you can understand you can when we see jesus christ when you understand jesus christ you can understand the father or you can understand jesus in his almightiness when he's on the throne when he created the earth and the rest of it outside of seeing jesus you can't understand god at all it's just too much fire and lightning it's when it gets powerful right listen to this you see <laughs> i love it it's so great see when god appears in his power things start getting destroyed do you understand that deep when god appeared on the mountain on mount sinai there was lightning fire lightning the, 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 the mountain's going to blow up. The mountain's all shaking. Rocks are flying all over the place. The, people, the Israelites are all scared, ducking for cover. Ah, almighty God. They're all diving here and diving there in fear. They're all scared because God turned up in just his essence, just turned up and things start going mad. Things just start blowing up. So this gets deeper. You see, in the book of Revelation, let me show you what happens when God turns up. I right, don't understand. When God turns up outside of the manifestation of Jesus Christ, it's not, it, it, it's frightening, right? It's frightening. You see, the Bible says, right, that um, at, the, at, the white, at, the, uh, the white, at the white throne judgment, Revelation 20 verse 11, it says, And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away, and there was no place found for them. So at the white throne judgment, God turns up in all his glory and power and everything disappears. The earth runs the, the heavens run everything disappears there's no place for it everything disappears do you get what i mean so this is where it gets powerful right Woo! who want to go here i'm gonna go here yeah it's gonna be this is crazy all right talk about jesus okay see this is why god has to manifest himself to us in this in the face of jesus christ because if he doesn't manifest himself as jesus i'm talking about if he doesn't if he doesn't come as that manifestation things just start getting blown up if God appears on the earth in his essence, earth will melt. It's where it gets deep. See, before when God created the heavens and the earth, you have God in dimension zero, okay? This is deep, right? It says, in the beginning, God, right? Genesis 1 1. In the beginning, God. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So, before God created the heavens and the earth, where was God? See? Crazy. That kind of shows you. You know that the earth and the heaven are in a separate dimension to where god is originally Woo! we had to observe absorb that we're in four dimensions heavens in ten dimensions but god operates outside of that heavenly realm because he was outside that heavenly realm before he, he was outside the heavenly realm or the realm of the heavens before he created it right now listen to this see the bible says that um G god this is like G all things were created through christ right it's like and it says that the Bible says that Christ was slain from the foundation of the earth. It's like God, if the world, when it says the Bible says that Jesus was slain from the foundation of the world. Okay, the world, the word world means times. In the New Testament, the word world in Greek, world means time. So Jesus was slain from the foundation of time. Woo! So before time even came into existence, Christ already died. Why? Because God has to, he knew that people were going to sin. He knew things were going to go wrong. But God cannot become near sin. This is the reason why God cannot come before near sin. God in his essence can't, can't come in contact or near sin. The reason why, sin will cease to exist. And anything that comes in contact with that sin will cease to exist. Because, because of God's holiness and glory, it will just all disappear. It will all vanish into nothingness. So what God had to do before he even started creating, the lamb was already slain. The sacrifice was already made. And at the beginning of time, so God starts. To, it's like an annex. So God starts to starts to um, create things through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ that he that happened before he even died in linear time. It's a bit mad, ain't it? Sorry about that. Um, if you're still here, then obviously you must be deep. Because <laughs> what I'm saying there is bonkers. So God had to create the earth on the heavens and the earth through an annex of Christ, if I can say that. He so God in His glory says, right. I need to manifest myself in this creation stage. I have to manifest myself a different way because I know they're going to sin. I know this and that's going to happen. But if I don't do this, then I can't create nothing because it's all going to be destroyed instantly. <laughs> so God has himself, manifest himself as the Lamb of God before things even start. 
and then he, it's like a, it's like he gets a piece of himself, if I could put it this way, it's like he gets a piece of himself, and then he creates everything through that piece. Do you get that? So he's like, he's, so God is protected, or no, we're protected from, Jesus Christ protects us from the almighty power of God, which is himself. <sighs> it's going to be a brain ache. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that. So that's why the Bible says that God created all things through Christ. All things are made by him and for him and through him. Everything has to be made through the sacrifice because if God didn't make that sacrifice, if he didn't sacrifice himself before he started to create, nothing would be here because it all would have been destroyed through his glory because of sin before anything creation even took place because it all would have happened eternally. So we wouldn't be here. So we all owe everything down to Christ. So Christ is the reason why we're here. It's the reason why the Bible says, in him, all things consist. In him, all things are held together. In who? In Christ. Who is Christ? Christ is the almighty God. But, he, but Jesus Christ is like an understanding that he's manifest himself in a certain way, but it's still him. He's still the almighty God. It's, there's no difference. It's the same person. So the same thing I'm trying to say, that where um, God being almighty, the almighty God, or God being the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit at the same time. I don't know why people can't see that. It makes sense to me. It's like me. My name's Robert. I'm a father. I've got kids. I'm a son because my dad's still alive. And I'm an uncle and an auntie. <laughs> I'm not auntie. <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> I'm not auntie. <laughs> That's hilarious. I'm an uncle. So I've best three manifestations, but my name is Robert. It's like the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Three, three different manifestations, but three manifestations, but his name is Jesus. That's the reason why the Bible says to go there and baptize in, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In the name. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit's titles. It says baptize in the name. Matthew chapter 28, uh, Matthew 28, chapter 19, I think. Baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. See, the apostles knew what the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is. They went and baptized in the name of Jesus. So it shows you that the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is Jesus. It's all Jesus. Anything you see is Jesus. Now, when they start talking about who is God praying to in the, who is God praying to in the Garden of Gethsemane, you need to understand God is 100% man and 100% God at the same time. He, he's manifested this way. So in other words, as a man, he got hungry and had to eat food. As a man, he had to sleep. But as God, he didn't sleep. As man, he had to eat food. But as God, he didn't need to eat food. As man, he got tired. As God, he didn't get tired. Do you understand what I mean? So you've got to understand the, the relationship of what's going on. Like when God was, when Jesus Christ was speaking, was he speaking as man or speaking as God? How was he, how was he speaking? What was he doing at that time? You see, it's going to get deep. You see, because the Bible says, hold on a minute. Let's just stop. I'm going to go back to the book of John. All right. I'm going to stop and go back to the book of John. Like I said before, it's a bit of a disclaimer. Some of the stuff I said was a little bit bonkers. And I think it probably is a bit bonkers. But hey, I'm just trying to show you guys that Jesus Christ, we understand Jesus Christ is not just, Jesus Christ didn't just die on the cross for our sins and that's it. No, Jesus Christ is far beyond all of that and the implications of Christ. Let me show you something, it gets powerful, all right? Because in the Old Testament, they knew God a certain way. Israel knew God a certain way through the laws and all the rest of it, you know, you know you've got to have this lamb, you've got to do sacrifice, you can't do this, you can't do that. They knew God a certain way. God manifested himself or gave them a revelation of him in a certain way dimension a certain night see i was saying to my wife the other day you see but when jesus christ turned up on the earth when god himself manifested on the earth everything changed everything changed everything that was in the old testament it all changed because the almighty god is on the earth again it goes into the kingdom talk it goes into the kingdom talk talking about the kingdom see i don't want to talk about the kingdom i'm gonna go somewhere else i'm trying to keep in the book of john See what I'm trying to say? It's your fault, Kadu. Kadu Woo. It says, if you're here watching this, it says your fault. I told you it's going get, to get ridiculous and I'm frightened of even speaking about this sort of stuff because it's going to start going mad. Because I'm going to end up going all over the place and going off topic and going to these crazy places. Because when Jesus Christ turned up on the, on, on the earth, the sovereign king arrived on the planet. The sovereign king arrived. The king of the kingdom arrived. And everything turned into a prince. But I, I, I just never, that's, that's kingdom talk. I ain't even going to go inside that because, like I said, everything changed. It's amazing. And it's, anyway, it says, um, and <laughs> verse 2, The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. So by Christ, all things were made by him, and without Christ, nothing would have been created. That's back to what I was saying. See, God had to manifest himself as Christ before he even started creating. Woo! Because if he didn't manifest himself as Christ before he started creating, that means... 
the sins that will people will be committing in, in the future, they wouldn't even exist because they would be instantly destroyed before he even started creating. So it's like Jesus Christ is like, is like our protection. The protect, it's like God created in a bubble. God created the heavens and earth in a bubble, in a dome. Woo, I like that, in a dome, you like that? <laughs> you like that? Some of the guys, some of the guys will like that one, ain't it? God created everything in a, created in a bubble. It's Jesus Christ that is the covering of creation. And without Jesus Christ covering creation, creation wouldn't exist. It would just explode out, out, out of eternity just like that because the goodness of the power of God will overwhelm everything and destroy it. So God got to make a bubble within himself. Like It's like God, God, the Bible says that God fills all heaven and earth. God is a spirit. So God is everywhere at the same time, but he doesn't manifest everywhere at the same time. People can't feel his manifestation. That's another conversation. So God created an annex inside himself, which is Jesus Christ, and then created inside that. There's a reason why when people die, when people die and go to hell and or die without Christ, they're in eternity, they get annexed out of the presence of God. Totally. God gets another annex where his presence is not manifested within himself, somewhere else. And this is the reason why there's wailing national teeth. Oh mad. You know, I saw hell a few times. I saw it the other day. I saw hell. I saw people. Sorry. I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna stop stop talking about that. I'm just seem like some spooky. Let me show you something, right? I have a seer's gift, or I have a gift of a seer. Being what? I can just talk to you and I can see things all day long. I talk about God, I start seeing different things. I see different dimensions. I start seeing visions and stuff while I'm talking to you. And it's a seer's gift. My wife has it too. <laughs> it's very, very interesting. Yeah, back to what I was saying. I'm on 28 minutes and I'm only on verse three. <laughs> Listen to this, it gets deep. Are you still here? Some people want to do long videos. I'm doing longer video, right? This is this is where it gets deep, right? It says, "All things were, were, were all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men." So Jesus Christ is our light. His light and his life is at, without him we have no light. Without him we have no being. Um, Apostle the Apostle Peter says that. He goes, "In him we have our moving and our movement and our being." It's in Christ, right? So Christ is our life. Christ is our all because in him dwells what we need. In Christ dwells everything that we need to sustain ourselves, just to have a sound mind, a sound life. It's all in him. Our eternal life is bound up in Christ. Everything we have, everything that, that God wants us to have is bound up in Christ. Listen to this, yeah? It says, and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehendeth it not. It shows you that, he, that Jesus Christ is obviously no darkness in him. And it goes that there was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. Yeah, it's all about Christ, obviously. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteneth every man that cometh into the world. So it's John, John is saying that Jesus Christ is that true light, right? And this is where it gets crazy, bonkers, nuts. Madness, you will understand something powerful today. I'm gonna to share something with you. 12, 14, oh, 14, 12, must be 14, 12. Yeah, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, right? Now the word Lucifer means uh, light bearer. Lucifer means light bearer, right? Lucifer means light bearer. So we talk about Lucifer, who became Satan, the accuser of the brethren, the dragon, the old serpent, we're talking about, we're talking about who we're talking about, right? Lucifer. Now Lucifer means, his name means light bearer. Now according to John, the book of John, Gospel of John, it says that Jesus Christ is that true light. Jesus Christ is the light, right? Jesus is the light. So if Lucifer is called, Lucifer's name means light bearer, whose light was he bearing? He wasn't bearing his own light, he was bearing the light of Christ. But obviously he didn't have a revelation of that. <laughs> but that's who his light he was bearing. This is the reason why he said, he, this is why the Bible says that he was lifted up, saying, because he was he had all his gold and silver and authority, this priest, this priest, this priesthood authority, he had his authority over all the other angels, he covered all the angels, had all this anointing, looked beautiful, had musical, whatever music coming from him and all this sort of stuff here. And he was lifted up, lifted up by his beauty. Because of his beauty, he got lifted up. But the Bible says that he was bearing the light of Christ. So Christ was his beauty. So the beauty of uh, Lucifer was Christ. So it shows you something that when he sinned, he lost the beauty of Christ and obviously became darkened within himself and became messed up. Remember, light means revelation. Light means understanding, okay? So when you have light, 
you have understanding. So when he fell, he became dark. He lost his understanding. He lost his light. He lost his direction. This is the whole reason why. When he was in a, his position, when Lucifer was in his position in heaven, he understood everything that was going on. That's why the Bible says that he was full of some, full of the sum of wisdom, full of wisdom and beauty. He's equal chapter 28. So he was full of beauty and wisdom. But when he fell and left his position, he, he stopped bearing the light of Christ and he became dark. This is the reason why when Christ died on the cross, it says, for if the princes of this world knew, they would not have destroyed or killed or crucified the Lord of glory. See that? Because the princes of this world, because they're no longer in their angelic position where God placed them, they have no longer got revelation of what's going on in the heavenlies. This is the whole reason why you have time traveling angels. This is the whole reason why you have time traveling angels like, you know how to say that? Yes, I did just say that. You have time traveling angels like, Gabriel, yeah? See, the angels got different gifts. They do different things, right? You've got Michael, who's a prince. He's the one who comes with war. He's the one who, he's a prince of, he's the prince of the power over, he's a prince of power over Egypt, uh, not Egypt, over Israel. So he's war. He's the one who thrust out Satan. Gabriel didn't thrust out Satan. Uh, uh, Michael did. Archangel Michael thrust him out. Book of Revelation chapter 12. But then, then oh no, yeah, 12, I think. You've got, but then you have Gabriel, who has revelation, future revelation that he comes and tells people about it told daniel about the future revelation he said that when christ will be on walking on the earth he, he he's the one who, who gives all his revelation that you'll see it he's the one who comes with a message to proclaim certain things certain revelation he's the one who proclaims it gabriel i can go into another uh, uh, goes a bit deeper than that i just like to i like to when you've got angels i like to give them if you give them the, the, like certain roles that they're meant to be doing you know it's quite deep there's lots of time traveling angels you've got angels that that take you know, you have time travel angels that, that take, that took, um, I say time traveling, right? I'm not talking about like something on TV. They've got some time machine. I'm not talking about that. Because obviously I'm talking about certain angels that's over revelation of the future, that come, that bring revelation from the future and bring it into the present and tell people, prophets in the present time, what's going to happen in the future. I'm talking about those that it's like they handle the future revelation. They bring it to us in the past. See, we're living in the past. We're not living in the future. The book, of, the book of Revelation is the past. The book of Revelation is God foretelling the past. Get your head around that. The book of Revelation is God foretelling the past because it's already happened in the eyes of God. I've said this before. The white throne judgment's already happened. If it didn't happen, John wouldn't have seen it. Powerful, right? Listen. Then it says, He was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. Who was in the world? Christ. Christ was in the world. God was in the world. And the, and the world was made by him, but the world did not know him. And it says, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. That's really, really sad. He came to his own people. The, he's the promised child, the promised one. He came to his own people, because obviously he was a Hebrew, and they rejected him. Most of it gets very, very happy. I get happy at this bit. It says, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Right? He's always saying that as many as believed on Christ, he gave them the power to become the sons of God. This is why I always say in a lot of my videos, we are not Christians, we are sons of God. A Christian and a son of God are two different things, two different creatures, two different creations, two different things. You have Christians who are sons of God. Oh, no, I can't, oh, yeah. You have sons of God who are Christians, but then you have Christians who are not sons of God. Oh yes, and you know loads of them. You have loads of people who profess to be Christians, but they are not sons of God. They profess God, or they profess to be, uh, you know, uh, believers, but they're not. They're not believers at all. They're not sons of God. They have not been born from above. Speaking to my wife the other day, I said that we are different creation. We are different creations. We are different creatures. Meaning what? We are no longer human beings. We are not. We're no longer born in darkness. We've been born from above. So because we're born from above, we are different from the rest of the creation that's on the earth right now. They're all spiritually dead. We are spiritually alive. Do you see that? Because we receive Christ and He's our light, we become spiritually alive. So we're born from above. That's what it says in the book of John chapter 3, which I will probably never get to. I, I will probably get to John chapter 3 in the year 2025, <laughs> the way I'm going. And, I've, and I haven't even gone back. Just imagine, let me show you something. I didn't do nothing. I didn't do a live. I didn't do it live today. I was going to do like a live session, like go live streaming. But I thought, you know what? There's no way I could go live because the questions will be going like this. And I won't be able to get nowhere. I'll probably still be on the first, the first chapter, the first, first verse. Anyway. I'm going to leave it there, okay, because I'm, I'm like 36 minutes, is quite long, um, and uh, hopefully this has helped out a few people. Uh, remember what I said, yeah, um, disclaimers, remember what I was saying, some of the stuff is kind of like mad, 
and it might be a bit too crazy for some people. But you know, just put it on the side, eat the fish and spit out the bones, the usual sort of stuff. Listen, it's Robert and Ambassador for Christ. If you've got questions, make sure you leave questions and comments down below. I'll try to talk about it and tidy things up. Share this video. You know, it's John chapter one. Um, and I'll carry on reading. I do live video, like not live video, I do a video like this tomorrow or something, and I'll try to carry on from where I am and you know, building up on those revelation, on that revelation that's been shared, and ask God to come and help us. Stay blessed. I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm crazy, ain't it?